Today, we're gonna take the classic flavor of the tuna salad sandwich and attempt to make a fine dining dish. Let's get cooking. So the first step is the tuna. Traditionally, tuna salad sandwich is made with canned tuna, which won't work for this dish. What we want mostly is to have that tender texture that you get from canned tuna. And I feel like the best way to get that is to confit it. So we're gonna cure it, and then we're gonna cook it in oil. Season all sides generously with salt. And let this sit in your fridge for a couple hours. The longer, the better. And what's gonna end up happening is the texture is gonna firm up quite a bit. This is a piece that was in for two hours. It lost some moisture, but most importantly, it's seasoned all the way through. We wanna start with a neutral flavored oil. This is grapeseed oil. A strong flavored oil like olive oil is gonna overpower the flavor of the albacore. So add the oil about halfway up your pan, some fresh thyme, we got five cloves of garlic. Just give them a little pound. We're gonna heat this up on medium heat. We have three pieces of albacore. This one was cured for two hours for one hour, and this one was the one that we just cured maybe 10 minutes. This way we can see how much of an effect cure has on it. And the most important part is that it's completely submerged. And then I have an oven at 225 degrees. We're gonna cook this nice and slow until everything is nice and tender. Fish has been in the oven for about 10 minutes. The best way to tell if the fish is done, really the best way to tell if any fish is done, is with a cake tester. When you insert it, there'll be a little bit of resistance, but you don't wanna feel like you're having to force it in there. It should go straight in. So normally I would say just keep it in the oil, let it cool down, but I was just thinking we need to have a side for this. So we're gonna need the oil to make that. This one is the one that was cured two hours. This one was cured for one hour. And this one was cured for 10 minutes. You're gonna have a little bit of albumin come up. That's the protein of fish. Come up to the surface. Also, we have some time, so we just wanna clean that off. Just use a butter knife. So let's find out if there's actually a difference. Let's start with the 10 minute. It tastes good, it's a little bit light. I would say at least minimum one hour. Minimum one hour, definitely worth it to do two hours. So I'm gonna break this apart so that's ready for later. We wanna leave it in nice big flakes, about that size. Every sandwich, including tuna salad sandwich, is served with a side. Whether it's pasta salad, potato salad, chips, we're gonna make a potato salad to incorporate into the dish. Fingerling potatoes, we're gonna place them in. Just like the fish, make sure everything's submerged. We're gonna put this back into the oven. These are gonna take a while. They're probably gonna take like 30 minutes. 225, I might bump it up a little bit to compensate. Uh, it took 45 minutes at 350. With our confit potatoes, you know that they are ready when they are easily pierced. Let them cool down in this liquid. And then last is to peel the confit potatoes. The easiest way to peel them is to cut a line down the side and peel them while they're still warm. Just use your fingers and break them into bite-sized pieces. It wouldn't be tuna salad sandwich if it didn't have some kind of mayo base to it. Basic way to make any mayo, do one egg yolk, 10 grams Dijon, and a little bit of lemon juice. Season it with salt and white pepper, but black pepper will also do. One of the keys to making a strong mayonnaise that won't break is to add a little bit of water in the beginning. Mix it all up. So we're just gonna drizzle this in nice and slow. As you build up the base of the mayonnaise, it's gonna become stronger and you have less of a chance of breaking it. Make sure that you're incorporating all the oil in or you add the next oil in. It's starting to become a little too thick, so we're just gonna add a little splash of water. Make sure to give it a taste. If you haven't had homemade mayonnaise, it's way better than store-bought. As it refrigerates, it'll start to thicken up a little bit. Next, we have all the vegetables for the dressing. First, we have some cornichons. Bring a lot of them. Same thing for the shallot and one stick celery. Celery brunoise, shallot, cornichon. Give that guy a nice mix. Make sure you give it a taste. For garnish, we're gonna take a stick of celery, preferably one that's even from top to bottom. Paring knife, you're gonna start at the top and there's fibers, and we're gonna pull all the fibers down. Then I usually flip around and just make sure that all of them are pulled from the bottom too. Sometimes they'll break before you get to the end, but it's like I got everything. Mandolin, I like to have it as thin as possible, but keep it whole. 
and usually you get that by adding a little pressure. Put these little guys off to the side. Normally you have parsley inside tuna salad sandwich, but we have all these celery leaves and I think we'll, we'll pick them and use this for a garnish on top. The yellow ones are super tender because they haven't seen the sun yet. And I think they have better flavor than the green. We gotta focus on the bread. Now, my favorite part of any bread is how crispy it is. So, what I was thinking is we have a baguette. We'll slice this and make it super crispy and break it apart. So here's how we're gonna cut them. You take off the first part and you're gonna slice it as thin but keeping it whole as possible. Should try add a little bit of olive oil? Lay down our baguette crisp. Now a little bit of oil on top. Brush it so it's nice and even. And season with a little bit of salt. After about 15 minutes at 300 degrees, they're nice and crispy. Just give them a flip and let them get the same color on the opposite side. And the last thing we have to use up is some lettuce. And I'm thinking the best way to use this up is a puree for the middle. Slice super thin. We need one shallot slice. So to start, we're gonna melt three tablespoons of butter, add in one sliced shallot, and just salt, and cook until translucent. Once the shallot's nice and translucent, 200 grams of lettuce. Turn up the high heat. Once the lettuce is all wilted down, add in 40 milliliters of white wine. And then cook out all the wine. Spread this out in a bowl, place this in either an ice bath or in your freezer to cool down. Now we're gonna blend up the puree. Place your mixture in a blender. I'm gonna do it in two batches, a do it in a small blender. And then to the final product, we're gonna add one tablespoon of butter. And here's half a tablespoon of butter. That is going to help blend it up better. And as you can see, it's still a little bit chunky. If we add just a little bit of xanthan gum, it'll help emulsify it better and help blend it up. Now it's nice and smooth. Last, we just have to pass it. Finish these up, we're gonna dress the tuna and the potatoes. I kept them individually so that I wouldn't have to worry about breaking up the tuna too much. First, we're gonna go down with the lettuce puree. I ended up adding a little bit of water because this seemed a little too thick. Maybe yours isn't as thick as mine though. Right into the middle, and then using the palm of your hand, tap it down. Try to keep it nice and round. Okay, so first thing, we're gonna go down with some nice big pieces of tuna. Kind of shape the border with the tuna. Okay, so next we're gonna go down with some potato. I like to cover any gaps if you have them. It's not potato salad unless you have eggs. We're gonna use some caviar. Next we have our bread. Then we have our celery and celery leaves. All right, let's try this out. Tuna. Caviar and potato go really good together. This has all the same flavors of tuna salad sandwich, just presented in a little bit different way. If you're doing a multi-course tasting menu, this would be perfect for a starter. It's really good. If you guys like this style of dishes, taking classic dishes and making a fine dining dish, let me know, maybe we can make a series out of it. And if you try this, let me know what you think. If you enjoyed this video, you gotta check out this menu next.